Because uh, I'm sure how look good that are sometimes uh, that guy have price because they don't have to work work that hard. And what's making a limp pants like here? Um, yeah. But I shave my own head. Oh. I've been saving money that much. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Every second, third day. Yeah. Kim on. Okay. All the time. So that's how you save money. Who will save her? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I save money. <laughs> I save money a lot, 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 lot. Yeah. Yeah, but I shave my, I shave my own head. Mm. Um, if I don't, when I'm, I'm lazy. Mm. Uh, my beautiful wife does the amazing job. Yeah. And I think she's having more fun doing it than me. Is it the time issue or is it um, just uh, the issue of saving uh, being in your blood? No, actually it's a time issue. It's okay. honestly a time issue. Mm. I mean, I have a very strict time management. Yeah. I've heard that there's no there's nothing as time management. Apparently you manage yourself in time. Because what? because time Ah um, man people are playing with me. Yeah, yeah, people are playing like, like no, there's no time management. <laughs> you actually manage yourself in time because okay. I mean twenty four hours is twenty four hours. Yeah. You can't pause you can't pause time. Yeah. But because I'm a very strict person with my time, uh. around nine, ten PM I'm already out. Even during the hard lockdown, six AM yeah. I'm up. Uh. I'm a routine person. I work better with structure. Okay. So it's a time thing. Wow. Uh, I know as busy as I get, mm. 10, 15 minutes, shave my own head, mm. ready for the go, for yeah. the road, yeah. So you're a lecturer, you're an entrepreneur. Let's talk about your lecturing uh, part. Yeah. Um, what do you lecture and where? So I do stand in lecturing at the Gordon Institute of Business Science. Okay. Um, around the issues of strategy in okay. particular, yeah. yeah. Around the issues of strategy and business operations. Mm. But in, in particular for social entrepreneurs, and mm. that's also my line of interest. Okay. Uh, but how, how, do you, how do you marry money with, with the social mm. injustices that are happening around the world? How do mm. you create a business that not only speaks about the money, but also speaks about uh, the social issues? Mm. So that's why I do part of my work. Mm. Um, but companies like the Business and Arts South Africa would call me every now and then mm. to come and facilitate business administration training. Mm. Uh, Southern African Association of Youth Clubs also mm. they'll do that. The British Council they mm. will do that. Um, I almost got stuck in Zimbabwe. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I almost got stuck in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Uh, two days before the lockdown was yes, announced in yes. South Africa. Yeah, because mm. I was there with the British Council on the okay. DICE program, facilitating a training there. Mm. And yeah, it was, it was a crazy thing. Eh? Sure. It was very scary. Mm. Yeah, but I would have been there for, I keep on saying I would have been there for two years, unprepared, two years, two years soon. Mm. But that's the work that I do. I, mm. uh, I do a lot of work with the Gordon Institute of Business Science. And at some point upon my graduation, mm. and they're like, hey, we, we like your vibe, eh? Don't yeah. you want to be our ambassador? I'm yeah. like, oh, that's, that's cool. And I think for me, for a guy who was born in a small town in mm. a free state, mm. till today, mm. one primary school, one high school, mm. I kid you not. So for me to be appointed as a brand ambassador for that institution mm. was, was really amazing. Mm. And for them also to say, we have a lot of young entrepreneurs who come within the EDA. So EDA would be the Gibbs. Enterprise, Enterprise Development Academy. Mm. So we have young entrepreneurs who come up around and they, they wanna grow within the, the entrepreneurship space or also maybe to climb at, uh, on the ladders mm. or at the corporates. So how do, you, how do we work around to make you an official mm. mentor for every program that we do? Mm. But obviously it can be every program. So it's as and when yeah. I, can, I can do that work, yeah. So you were brought up in the Free State. Where exactly in the Free State? Go Alinton, Alinton Free State. I always say Alinton is Wakanda. Yeah. Only people from Alinton knows about Alinton. You know how we never know about yeah. Wakanda? Yeah. That's what Alinton is. Sure. Nobody knows where Alinton is. It's okay, just it's around, closer to what? <laughs> it's closer to Senegal, Help. Yeah. <laughs> Senegal, you pass Helpron, Lentley, Bethlehem, oh, okay. uh, Petrastein. Yeah. That, those, those are the areas. It's sure. a very small town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm interested in understanding your entrepreneurial side. Mm. In particular, I mean, you started a whole franchise of a coffee shop. Mm. Tell us more about that. So this was when I was still a full-time performer, a theater performer. Okay. Uh, I was in Europe with mm. the great Gregory McComber. Mm. And we went to this amazing coffee shop. Mm. You know, when you're chilling there, there's somebody on the guitar, mm. and there's a dancer there, and there's a musician. I thought, oh my God, 
I think when I go back home, this is what I want to do. Mm. That was 2010, uh, 29 actually, 2009 mm. before, before the World Cup. Mm. And I got a space at Corner Fox and from Brandy's. Yeah. It was one of the coolest coffee shops ever mm. around Jersey. Very, very cool. Mm. But it was losing money like nobody's business. And that's where my interest to start Shape Cafe as a, as a coffee business uh, started. But it, was a, it failed dismally. It mm. failed dismally. And when people ask me what went wrong, I went wrong. I, I was the reason why that coffee shop died. Okay. Um, I used to say I used to be a kid with a coffee shop. Mm. In all honesty, I was a kid with a coffee shop. Mm. But on top of that, my understanding of how to run a business was non-existent. Mm. And all my friends used to go there and hang, hang around them. Your mm. Somizis, your Lebu Mashile, your Warren Masemola. Mm. And remember, this was the time before the hype of a social media. Mm. And we worked a lot on brand ambassadors. Mm. So the guys were the brand ambassadors were eating for free <laughs> every day. <laughs> and I was just sitting there stuck with giving my friends food, and, yeah. you know. And that's how it died. But also mm. I think I was still hung on the idea of being mm. a performer. Mm. I would go for three months, four months, go on a tour without proper system that allows the business to run independently. Mm. And I think that's why, that's why it, it died. Mm. But my interest, I, never, I was never interested in running a coffee shop. Mm. But I've always been around entrepreneurship. I've always loved the idea of owning a business. I mean, from home, Kohaye, Makolo, where go my father's side. Even my mother's side, came out to my tech shop. Mm. Uh, so I grew up around those those type of a setup. At home, I remember the Rick mm. So actually, mm. my grandparents still do now. Uh, sell bread, you come sell packet of chips, you know. So I I grew up around that area. So in, entrepreneurship became a point of interest. Mm. But also, I grew up in a family of school and and, and, and mm. academy. Um, I'm the only performer in the entire. Oh, and apparently, nobody in my entire family, grandparents, great-grandparents mm. has ever been a performer. So I was wow. the first, hopefully... So it started with my, you? It started with me. It mm. started with me. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting that, I mean, you owned your first uh, coffee shop mm. in Josie and it failed. It failed. But you reflected and you said, no, it, 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 it didn't fail because of the business itself, but I failed. For sure. Um, because I no knowledge, but the thing of having friends and yeah. uh, everybody in the ambassador. <laughs> everybody was an ambassador. I know Kofi Amahala. <laughs> everybody, yeah. Um, but then since then, you've been able to set up this whole franchise with mm. a string of uh, coffee shop. How many are we talking about now? We, we're talking, for, I need to count them first. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not plenty, plenty. Yeah. So we have... Um, at the M Studios, oh. uh, one we've just recently actually tricked um, one great guy who I think is going to make wonders in the coffee industry oh. uh, with Lem's Coffee Cafe. So we're incubating him at the M, M Studios. And we have Tabon Shopping Center, we have the Slater Gym, we've got the Perth Center. And on the 1st of November, we're opening at the Planet Fitness. Oh. Uh, that's, I think it's, yeah, it's five if yeah. we had to count. Yeah. yeah. So people have a myth about franchises mm. what what do you think are some of the myths that people have about uh, the franchise and also just for for me to clear this one um shape cafe are all self-owned yeah so it's it's satellites owned yes. by 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 one person that is me mm. uh, the myth around the, the franchise is that uh, let me talk about the reality of it before yeah you don't own it. It still it still belongs to the franchise owner. You mm. you practically a manager. Yeah. And I remember one friend. I won't mention <laughs> names. A glorified <clears throat> manager. It's you are a glorified manager in yeah. all honesty. And I'll give you a perfect scenario of a friend of mine who was opening a gym. Mm. Uh, she's a doctor. Wanted to open a gym. Mm. Uh, I won't name the company mm. uh, where she had one of the franchises uh, with the, the the cell phone networks. Mm. And she took money from the franchise to go and open the gym. Within a week, they called her and said, please, madam, mm. take the money back. Mm. It's not your money. Oh. It's our money. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's our money. Mm. And I think from there, that's when I, I learned into more detail about the importance of growing my own businesses mm. as satellites and have as many branches mm. that belongs to me and not a, a franchise. Mm. And also with a franchise, Prajon, you mm. need to know that me as a franchise owner and you as a franchisee, I take my money on the cross profit, not on the net profit. So it means if I want 7% of mm. the cross profit, 
all your operational expenses become your responsibility as a franchisee. Mm. I already win already. Mm. And also there's something that you will pay every month that mm. is a, a licensing uh, uh, right. Mm. So my, my idea of, of franchisees is that you are a glorified manager in mm. all honesty. Mm. You have no ownership. And mm. also as a franchisee, if, you, if I'm selling coffee and you decide one day you want to put fat cakes, I can terminate the contract immediately, mm. you lose all the money. Sure. But as a person who's running their own stream of, 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 of satellite shops, mm. you can decide whatever that you want to decide, whenever that you want to decide. Yeah. So franchises also have a very, very... The beauty of that is that you're already stepping in a very well-established business. Yeah. Systems are already there. All mm. you have to do, in mm. all honesty, is for you to manage the systems. Mm. And that's just that. And then you take a little profit from there and then... You if you are like then you declare a salary. Yeah, then you declare a salary. <laughs> <laughs> then you declare a salary. Yeah. I mean, with a business like mine, I'll mm. also give you a perfect example. I have the leverage of also when I grow the business, and I'll make an example with our current uh, manager. Mm. I can give him a profit share of the business, which is the case right now. Because mm. I'm also of a belief of um, we need to grow inclusively. You can't be the only superstar in the team. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make sense. How do we create a system where you take the people that you want to grow with and you give them the profit share? Obviously, mm. it's not equity, but also that grows their confidence in becoming better managers and mm. becoming mm. better partners in the business. With a franchise, you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Okay. We'll revisit your model uh, in a while. So tell me then, what is the capital outlay to start a coffee franchise? So. It will depend on the size that you want to go with. Oh. Um, as you said, you want to revisit uh, my, my model. I do pop-ups. It's, it's cheaper, it's easier. Mm. You're almost immune to load shedding. Yeah. 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 Because if you do the pop-ups like I am in, with all my shops, mm. you are literally at the, at the walkway. It's a kiosk. Oh. So think about it. So it, it's not a structure it's like... It's not a structure like... Time. Yeah. Yes. Think about it. When load shedding hits, mm. where does electricity come first? Mm common areas. Yes. If you're plugged in the common areas mm. with generator, I never suffer from load shedding yeah. at all. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but the startup capital for that you're looking at about 250,000. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 250,000. Um, that's for your machines. I mean, a good coffee machine, you're looking at about 60,000 rent for just one coffee machine. The grinder, you're looking at about 20,000 okay. rent. Yeah. So you have a capital outlay at 250,000. Or Rikisa coffee, uh, let's say 35 rand. I'm just making an example. Yeah, yeah. And then you still have to pay the person who's doing that. How long does it take for one to, ten, to then break even? I think it also depends on the market where you, you're oh. starting. Oh. Um, it's, it's not a one size fit all oh. type of, of an approach. Um, if you are in a good, let's use a, a, a mall as mm. an instance, as, as a case study. Mm. If you're operating in a mall where there's high food traffic mm. and you also look at the LSM within that community, mm. you also look at the number of people, the culture of coffee mm. in that community, uh, within the first 12 months you can break even. Okay. Um, but sometimes, I mean, I'll give you another example. We have a coffee shop in a township in Cebu Gay mm. between the biggest squatter camp and a hostel, yeah. and we sell the premium product. It took us two years, huh. really two years. Huh. But what was beautiful about that is that with my experience of social entrepreneurship, huh. I was able to speak to the landlord and say, adopt us as an enterprise development beneficiary. In that way, we are exempt from paying rent. So huh. it gives me enough platform and a freedom for me to grow the brand and do a lot of product education. Huh. Uh, but two, two years, it took us two years to start breaking even. Yeah. yeah. But then have you had a, a different experience or better experience elsewhere? Uh, yeah, but at the Southgate Mall, first month, we were only positive. First month? First month. We sure. were rich. First I month. think you were guy. <laughs> first month, we were like the rich gang, yeah. eh? How much is your we coffee? Rich <laughs> also, that's one thing that we, yeah. we, we always talk about, especially with uh, mm. market penetration. Mm. Uh, looking at your cost to produce and cost to sell, mm. I try to make it as affordable as possible um, so that we push volume more than the price. Right. Yeah. Um, we sell coffee from as little as 19 rand. Mm. An amazing good quality coffee. Yeah. Um, but we try to push volume more than pushing the pricing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how, how do you market uh, your fr franchise? We do a lot of social media, obviously. Social media right now um, and digital marketing, many people take it for granted. 
but the impact and the power of that has been amazing. Mm. Word of mouth remains one of the biggest marketing uh, tools that anyone can use. Mm. And we have what we call army of shapers. If you go around the valley, you find everybody, if you go on social media, when they say Shape Cafe, mm. you see a green hat. Mm. And those people, I remember there was a wave that came that we, as a team, none of us realized that. There was a thing about Val Twitter. Uh, yeah. You know Valke Italy, I guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Valke Italy. Mm. So there was a whole thing about the Val Twitter and the Italian flag. And they were literally just on the day, dedicating the day to, let's celebrate the Val greatest individuals mm. and businesses. Shape Cafe for the whole day was ranking number one with number of retweets, number of people who were tweeting, number of people who were saying, Shape Cafe this, Shape Cafe that. Mm. But I think also because of our model as a social enterprise, the reason I want to go back to the word of mouth as mm. a stronger marketing tool. Mm. Because we do a lot of community work mm. and it's embedded in our model, it's not, it's not a CSI thing, it's mm. an everyday thing where we take kids to school. Mm. Uh, perfect example again, um, the current manager, we actually took him to school when he was studying. Mm. Uh, our logistic coordinator also, same thing, we paid for him to go to school. Uh, when there's a social need in our community, we're the first one to rise and say, we're going to take care of that. We're going to mm. help with that. And in that way, you find people rooting for us. But John, let me give you another amazing story that happened. Mm. So two shops were looted mm. during the July unrest. Mm. I remember there was a video trending of people showing people carrying machines and coffee yeah, machines. I remember that. Uh, kind of saying, that guy, he, he trended a lot, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, they were running around with coffee machines. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And people were inboxing me like, yo, Shape Cafe has been looted, Shape Cafe has been looted. Mm. And when I looked at the video, I'm like, mm -mm, these are familiar faces. Yeah. Can I tell you what was amazing about mm. that? Hours before looting, when the wave was starting to pick up, literally people who worked at the mall, shops next to us, even at the gym, hmm. they went to Shape Cafe, they took all our coffee machines, fridges and everything to take them inside the gym to protect them. Hmm. And they left their shops. They went to Shape Cafe to collect Shape Cafe's uh, equipment hmm. to protect it. Hmm. And obviously counters and everything were broken the next day. Hmm. But Brad John, if I can tell you that when we're starting to raise funds again for us to reestablish Shape Cafe, mm. we got 90% of our re reopening capital from the very same community. Wow. People were donating money, people were donating furniture, people were donating, mm. people were just coming on board. Mm. And I think that has been our greatest marketing tool to mm. date, mm. that we put people before profit. Mm. And if you look at Shape Cafe under our logo, it's written, building a community of shapers. And we yeah. remain true to that every day. Mm. We literally want to build a community of shapers. Mm. The guy that we're incubating at, at the M Studios is a very same purpose, mm. building a community of responsible shapers. Yeah. Yeah. So break down your model for me. Mm. What makes uh, Shape Cafe unique uh, compared to other coffee shops and other uh, franchise um, properties that are out there? For sure. Uh, one is that we are hybrid of three things. Mm. We are hybrid of coffee and ice cream. Right. So one, it means we are not seasonal. Yeah. So come winter, come summer, we sell and we sell very good. Mm. Uh, secondly, the, the third part of the leg of the hybrid is that whole thing of putting the community before us and mm. putting people before us. Mm. The model that we use is that we take 3% of our net profit to reinvest in the community. Mm. Um, reinvestment could mean as simple as there is a school that needs uh, assistance. I mean, on our birthday, as a matter of fact, we took part of our money and, and with uh, Safari Investment at, at Tabo Shopping Center, we put the money together and then we looked for one sp small business in the township that needed to be revamped. Oh. And then we all went there to renovate that business. And I think that's what makes us different. Oh. People know that we put people before profit. Oh. And the greatest model ever for us is that we, we have created such a lovely, mm. non-alcohol, <clears throat> non-toxic environment mm. for young people. If you go to, especially I'll talk about the one in, in, in the valley a lot, because that's home for me, mm. and I can resonate with that a lot. You get to that space, you find a lot of young people as young as six years, they go to Shape Cafe to just chill and not mm. buy sometimes. Mm. But that's the culture that we've built. You find it, right now, you know townships and alcohol, mm. it's becoming, a, it, it, it's mm. a taboo when it's becoming the greatest uh, pandemic ever. Mm. 
we have created a space that teenagers can be teenagers mm. and kids be kids mm. in the absence of harassment. And that's what sets us apart from a lot of coffee shops. Wow. Yeah. How did you find the, the, your coffee shop? I mean, uh, I would imagine a lot of small to medium businesses, they always, the buzzword there is funding. Funding, funding yeah. Mm. So I was still a student at Gibbs. Mm. Um, wrote my paper, research paper. Why do small businesses don't succeed in, in the townships? Yes. Uh, you look at the greatest spaza shop, they never get to as far as shop right checkers. Mm. Then there must be a problem. The problem must be in the systems. Mm. The problem must be in, in the strategies. So where do I get the money? I have one coffee machine that I bought with my dancing money. Mm. Uh, because dance pays us a lot of money. People don't know, mm. but sure. yeah, professional contemporary dance pays us a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, especially when you do mm. your commercial work, you, mm. we, we get paid decent money. Mm. After two gigs, I was able to save up for a coffee machine and a grinder mm. and a fridge. And first thing that I went to, uh, the space that I went to was Table Shopping Center. I spoke to the guy who owns one of the biggest gyms in the Valley, Free State, mm. uh, Slater Gym. Mm. I asked him to give me a corner in his gym um, on, the pep, on, 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 on the premises of, if you give me this corner, I can pay you at least 5,000 every month, or mm. we go on a profit share. Mm. And he opted for the profit share. Mm. On the last day of the month when I paid him, he returned my money and said, just buy me a, a Lamborghini when you're rich. Ah. Um, here's an opportunity that I'm giving ah. you. So, and that's how I started building. And it happened again, same thing with Chabon Shopping Center, mm. where they give us a space for free, uh, we are on a seven, six years now mm. operating a coffee shop for free mm. at both Tavon Shopping Centre and Slater Gym. Mm. So the money to start, it started with that li those two little coffee machines, but reinvesting in a business every month. Mm. When you make enough net profit, you take, you buy one chair. You take, mm. you buy, um, I didn't have 250,000, mm. most definitely. Mm. But the capital also, you, you, you make a lot of losses in your business. Mm. Um, I say this a lot. Business is one of the most difficult things ever. And for me, it's the most difficult thing I've ever done in my entire life. This yeah. thing is difficult. Yeah. And when you make your losses there and there, you'll go and ask for funding in certain institutions um, and corporate companies to come and give you sponsorship, the non-refundable funding. Yeah. And that's where you get the money to, to grow your business. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you were to advise someone, I mean, what, what would be easier um, between uh, investing in an existing franchise versus starting your own, your own franchise? I would say definitely, without a doubt, start your own. Mm. Start your own, mm. start with what you have, mm. as cliche as it sounds. Start with what you have, start wherever you are, mm. and grow gradually. But the most important thing also, Prajon, what I find is that um, when you start very small with what you have, many people give up in the first year. Mm. And that's the biggest mistake. Mm. And I understand challenges happen. The mm. economy is rough right now. Mm. But many people quit in the first year, quit on the second year. Mm. And I think that's the biggest, 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 biggest mistake. Uh, but obviously, you can't do the same thing over and over again that has been failing. You need to find assistance, get mentorship, mm. go and look for those funding outside. But many people quit before they even try Mm. Harder, yeah. Okay. One of the biggest downfall for a lot of small to medium businesses is managing the cash flow. Yeah. Um, what is your experience with that when it comes to managing cash flow? I think I'm very, mm. I'm very good with with money management. Okay. Um, especially money, that part of the yeah. business cash flow, mm. um, the discipline of where is the money mm. need to be reinvested in the business? Mm. Does mm. it go to growing the business? Or do you look for rainy days for the next coming two, three months uh, when you know you're going into the season that is bad for your business? Also, Prajon, what I find is it's, it's, it's the biggest mistake that people do with the business money. Using the money that's supposed to be the business money for mm -hmm. personal, personal reasons. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. And mm -hmm. at the beginning of the business, if this is your only source of in income, it's inevitable. You're probably going to use it to buy groceries at home, take kids to school. Mm -hmm. But don't make it a habit of maintaining your lifestyle with the business money, mm. especially at the early stages. Even when it's growing, and you find that when, when, when the business starts to grow, people start to change their lifestyle. Mm. They start to go into a more expensive lifestyle. Mm. And honestly, pers personally, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that we do, mm. especially as young entrepreneurs. The moment business starts to take a different form, mm. you, that take year 8,000 ah. <laughs> that you've been hunting <laughs> now becomes your reality. Yeah. And cash flow management, becomes 
the downfall for for many businesses. Yeah. Yeah. But also, hanya uh, and for 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 small business also to learn where to invest their money. Um, I mean, you've got a lot of investment opportunities in big mm. companies that are listed in the JSE. Mm. Uh, just go and buy those shares for 1,000 rand, buy those mm. shares for 2,000 rand. Mm. That also, I think, for Shape Cafe has been one of the greatest mm. saviors for, for, for us. So, talking about being able to separate business finance from personal finance, do you find that the problem is not being able to treat business money as business money and actually pay yourself a salary at the end of the month. Yeah. And, and once you pay yourself a salary, which will last you, last you until the following month, if, if a deal in the middle of maybe the first week or second week, if a deal, if you, a you deal, don't yeah. use the money that's coming in Definitely. Uh, to go and buy certain things here and there which are personal. Yeah. Mm. So the customers who buy your coffee, is it strictly cash? Can they uh, swipe? And how does that whole system work? Because obviously, if bus wiper come with this cash, I mean, somebody has to do the books. For sure. How, how does that work? Um, yeah, it's both cash and swiping, and people can buy vouchers. You can do online shopping, mm. and then you just come and collect. Um, but our system, our money management system is very, very, very particular. Every day when you get stock, it's recorded every day. At the end of the day, you send a report, this is how much stock we received, this is how much money we made, mm. this is how much money is to be deposited at the end of every day. Mm. So I do that, but we also have an office, obviously, that's running at the back end. Mm. And the ladies at the, at the office also, I think they're doing an exceptional work mm. of making sure that proper communication between all shops is happening, especially with, with, with money management. Mm. Um, but also with stock taking, every day we try to find different ways of how do we manage our stock better. Mm. How do we manage the cash flow better? Uh -huh. Where is the cheapest supplier? It, logistically, does it make sense for us to travel from this point to this point uh -huh. to buy three things versus to buy in bulk? Uh -huh. Other days, it forces you to buy in small quantities because uh -huh. the business is just dry. You look, if I buy in bulk, am I sacrificing the salaries or am uh -huh. I sacrificing the rent? So let's buy for the next two days. And I think it's just the whole idea of understanding your business and knowing your business and knowing the pattern in your business. When is the bigger traffic? When is the smaller traffic? Uh -huh. Which days of the month where you need to sell a lot? Uh -huh. And I need to say one of the point of sale that we are using, it also a good technology that enables me to predict which hours on the day where we need to buy stock because it's not busy around this time. Uh -huh. um, where, where do we get a lot of money? Is it cash money or is it cut money or uh -huh. is it with the vouchers? Uh -huh. If it's cash money, let not a lot of cash sit at the shop, uh -huh. meaning every day you need to deposit. Uh -huh. But also there's a negative to that. It means if you deposit every day, your bank charges at the end of the month, they tell you. But yeah. that's every business that, that runs with hard cash on it, with the cash sales. Yeah. yeah. I think what, what I love about what you're saying is that you're not giving people a false impression or a business is easy. Yeah. And or, yeah, when it starts working well, you won't make losses. There will be losses. There will That's be losses. reality. Yeah. But I mean, you, you take that on the chin and you continue as long as you're clear on your vision. Mm. And that seems to be something you have mastered with your coffee shops. For sure, Proton. Uh, I mean, you look now, we are six years in business. Mm. Past five months has been the most difficult year, months compared to when we started actually. Uh -huh. The economy is crazy right now. Uh -huh. The economy is really crazy. We had to downsize. We uh -huh. had to go on staff retrenchment. We had to go on salary cut for other people and create spaces where you work from home. Uh -huh. You be on a uh, temporary retrenchment. When uh -huh. things are picking up, we'll call you again. Uh -huh. We had to sacrifice where we had to sacrifice. We lose money all the time, but because we have a proper systems and we have proper strategy and we have a proper model that we trust. We know where to eliminate, we know where to in increase, we know where to reduce, we know where to press harder, we know where to go. Mm. So when the sales drops, mm. this is what I always say. Imagine this, Pratron. Mm. So you've seen the motorbikes, eh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. When they hit the corner and mm. they never fall, yeah. because science says when you accelerate, the gravitational force cannot pull you down. But we Peter happy for some of us, maybe Risa Yanko in business school. The gravitational force yes. cannot pull you down if you accelerate. Yes. 
Um, the reason why they don't fall is because it's called excellence at the edge of chaos. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's a thing that's used around that, and they use the motorbikes as an example. Mm. So excellence at the edge of chaos means when you hit the sharp curve, that's where you accelerate. Yeah. And many people, when you hit the sharp curve, mm. they want to slow down. You want to slow down, that's where you fall. Mm. But the gravitational force cannot pull you down when you accelerate. Mm. Think about it. I get an echo chest, so good plus I get an echo chest, the sharp echo chest, pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Yeah. When the speed deaccelerates, mm. that's when it falls underwater. Mm. So that's science, basic science. Wow. Wow. When you are on a high speed, mm. it's, it's, it's impossible mm. for you to drop. Mm. That's very profound. Yeah, the, the moment you slow down, that's where you sink. Yeah. And that's what happens, and that's what we're trying to do now. Mm. Because we're in that edge of chaos, mm. what we wanted to do when the cells are dropping, we go back to the systems, we go back to operations, we go back to the HR. It's like, mm -mm, you've been dropping the ball. Yes. Let's work on as mm. you as an individual. Mm. Let's increase you. Hey, that thing has not been done properly. Why are we not recording the way we... Mm. And that's where you fix when the sales are dropping. Mm. And I kid you not, this current month, sales are amazing. Mm. Because we fixed what was wrong at the back end. Uh -huh. yeah. well, you know what I just picked up from what you said? I mean, it's, you're talking about the basics. Mm. So when things are not going well, so you first check, are we doing all the basics For sure. the right way? For sure. Mm. For sure. I'm a dancer. Mm. Uh, we... For a 45 minute show, mm. we rehearse for six months, eight hours a day. Mm. Patience is one of my strongest points. Mm. I, I know the importance of practicing every day. Mm. And that's what I say. Every time when things go wrong, it doesn't matter how chaotic it is. Mm. On my own, I always go back and say, where were we three years ago, two years ago? Mm. Why was it working so well? And why is it not working now? Mm. Of course, time change, personnel change, HR change, system mm. change. But where do we borrow from what we've done successfully before? Mm. Let's reintroduce that. Mm. Let's look at where can we improve now. Let's look at you as a manager. You, do, you used to do an exceptional work, mm. but you don't because you are overworked now. Mm. Let's try to reduce the amount of work that you are doing mm. so that you can be more effective mm. again. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. That's mm. amazing. Um, so when you talk to... Uh, people are starting business. I mean, you're, mm. in, you, you're invited to be a part-time lecturer yeah. and feature on some of these uh, courses that are offered them. So what is the one key thing that you say to them when it comes to managing and starting businesses and managing a healthy business? Systems. From, from a strategy point of view. From a strategy point of view. Mm. You see, and I'm very, I'm, I'm super passionate about strategy. Mm. Strategy project, it's, it has three layers. Mm. You've got the corporate strategy, you've got the, um, the, the business strategy, mm. and you've got the functional strategy. Mm. So when people start their business, my first question is, are you aware of your uh, corporate strategy? Mm. So corporate strategy would be, which industry are you playing in? Mm. Because right now it's at the T-shirt, the jiggy jiggy, so it's at the ice. Yeah. And that's why many people start to lose it. Mm. What is your corporate strategy? Which industry are you in? Mm. If you're in coffee, this is my industry. I'm mm. in a coffee business. Mm. And the business strategy would be, where do you operate? Mm. If your model is, I want to operate in malls and malls only, that's mm. your business strategy. That's mm. your competitive uh, strategy. This mm. is where I want to attack. Mm. And when you go to functional strategy, that's why you've got those multiple layers. You're talking about your marketing strategy. You're talking about your HR strategy. You talk about your financial strategy. Mm. And that's where it's, it's most important. So when I talk to small businesses, the first thing is, who do you want to be in the industry? Mm. Who is the biggest player in that industry? If you're in coffee, you must know the biggest player in the coffee industry. Mm. If you are into t-shirt, you need to know who's the biggest player in the textile industry. Mm. And that's where you need to start to think, big mm. and not think local. Mm. And in that way, it also enables you to create systems that compete locally, provincially, nationally, and internationally. Yeah. So the first thing that I always speak to entrepreneurs who say, I need to start my own business, is from a strategic point of view, do you understand where you want to play? Mm. Do you understand who you want to be? Mm. And do you understand what you need, the resources, for you to be a competitive business? Mm. But secondly, and remember this is also from my personal experience, mm create systems that enables the business to run independently in your absence. Mm. I mean, I can't be in all five shops. Mm. I have another business, of the bag manufacturing business. We manufacture bags um, for, for different corporate companies, for individuals, for schools, and people want to start their own businesses. Mm. That's the other business. But those, the factory runs independently mm. in my absence. All the shops, 
the office, most importantly is create systems that mm. works for you. And systems are not just digital things. Yeah. It's also just every day when you open stock taking, that's mm. a system. Mm. Come lunchtime, go back, check, ice cream melted enough for it, for it to be put in the machine. Mm number of whatever systems are very very basic things that you need to start with you know something you said you say something very profound there because i think this is where a lot of uh, small to medium businesses are struggling mm. because you you know it's a small business you are the key man if i may use that yeah. word i know the gender activists will say but why not key woman yeah okay yeah. key yeah. man key woman yeah key All person right? yeah key person yeah. i think it's even healthier uh, safer yeah. that way. yeah safer so you're a key person there but when you are not present, the business stops because nobody knows where to get what, who company in, mm. they don't even know where to get the stock and all sorts of things. Uh, and, and business just stops. Or if you are sick, the business stops. The business is sick, Leon. Yes. Yeah. I think it's a question of, and it's, it's one thing that we always talk about, um, are you self-employed or are you an entrepreneur mm. or are you a business person? Mm. Self-employed. So will these be, are different things. These are different. How do we take off it? Uh, self-employed yeah. will be the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, self-employed will be the doctor. Yes. If the doctor is sick, nobody gets healed. Yes. Yeah. But you, you are self-employed. You are working. You know. Yes. An entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who creates things maybe from the scratch. Mm. Create your own business from the scratch. And the franchise owner would be a business person. Yeah. Who just goes into different opportunities to buy this. And the three cannot be isolated. Mm. At other points, the three are interlinked. Mm. So it's not an isolation of, of, mm. of, of things. Mm. You are not involved in your business on a day-to-day -day operation. It doesn't mean you're sleeping every yeah. day. Yeah. It means you're still working actively. So mm. I'm the CEO at Shape Cafe. I still work. I think I work more, more hours than anyone who works at Shape Cafe. Mm. Because they start work at 9 o'clock, other shops at 7 p.m. It depends at the, at the mall where they mm. operate. I'm already up by half past five. I'm starting to work. Mm. During the day, I go to different shops. I go to meetings. I do the work. Um, evening when I get home, I work again until mm. 8 p.m. Mm. Um, it doesn't mean you are sitting at home. I'm doing that. You still have to... Hey, it's really mal. Yeah. Yeah. When you want to be the boss. <laughs> ah, it's really mal. Yeah. If you want to be the boss, mm. if you want to if you wanna live lavish mm. and get... There will be a point where you get passive income yeah. in, in a business, and I pray for that for everyone who mm. gets in entrepreneurship. Mm. There will be a point where money just flows in. Mm. We're not to a share of fellow tour, you know. We want to yeah. get there. Everyone want to get there. Yeah. But it is most important for you to get people with capabilities, and also, you know, when people ask me what is the most difficult thing about entrepreneurship, mm. I tell them it's not the market penetration. Yeah. It's not. It's not the money management. Mm. It's the human beings. Mm. Ooh, they will show you flames. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> ah. Motu. Yo, 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 yeah. yo. The most difficult thing about Prajon, you literally employ a person who wants to sit ho at home for half a month. And get paid. And get paid. Yes. And question why they are mm. on unpaid leave. Yeah. You, it, entrepreneurship is crazy from it. Well, you see when you talk about human beings mm. and, and entrepreneurship, you will be very lucky when you get one or two of them. And when you get hold of those people, mm. you need to treat them like gold. Mm. And it doesn't mean, and this is also what I always teach my, my manager, mm. is that there will be a point in your entrepreneurship journey or as a manager where you're going to see people who come in our doors. You will see talent and assets mm. and you will see labor. They're all equally important. Mm. But you just need to know how to invest in any of them. In an asset that can grow the business, that's where you need to invest mm. accordingly. In labor, you just buy labor enough material and equipment to make them a better laborer. Yeah. But they're all important. Nobody is less important. Mm. But you just need to know where do, you where do you invest. And also, I mean, people say you need to put your emotions aside from the mm. business. It's impossible. Yeah. Business are run by human beings. Human beings are buying products. We cannot remove the human heart from a business. It's impossible. Wow. Yeah. So, hard work are by paperwork. Mm. Um, yes, we've gone digital, but generally, just getting your admin right. Yeah. Um, you know, how important that is. Because, uh, you know, sometimes um, when people have to file for tax, it's a problem, it's mm. a mess. When you are asked, Okay, you're looking for finding, but where's your financial statement? Where's yeah. your income statement? You cannot produce those. Uh, cash flow, you cannot produce any document. Mm. How important is the issue of paperwork for any small uh, to medium businesses? 
Uh, Prajwan, ever since we've been in this building, eh, how many times have you thought it's, it's going well, eh? to oh. fall on you and we're all going to die? Oh. You never think about that. But what holds it very strong is the pillars. Oh. The paperwork of a business is the pillars of the business. Oh. It's very attractive. It's oh. not sexy. Nobody sees them. Nobody buys them. Yeah. Nobody says, like, oh, my God, look at oh. that paper. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I want to buy into this business because yeah. it's so well packaged. Oh. But it's the foundation of every business. The sustainability of every business depends on the paperwork of the business. Oh. All the shops are in a mall. The first communication that you have with them, they say, show us your paperwork, mm. show us your public liability insurance, show us your compliance documents, show mm. us. If you have none of that, mm. you don't even have one toe in the market. Mm. I told you about looting, I told you about the COVID. We got almost all the, 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 the relief files that were out there for, for COVID. Looting, when looting happened, we got a lot of financial assistance from corporate companies, oh. all because of the paperwork that was available. You hunt better with the paperwork. Oh. When you have the paperwork in place, you definitely hunt better. You are attractive. Everyone, I want to play with you, oh. honestly. Yeah. When you have the paperwork, many corporate companies also, they want to take you oh. and adopt you as their enterprise development beneficiary. Yeah. I, we are one for Rand Merchant Bank. We are one for Gibbs. We are one for Safari Investment. Uh -huh. We are one for, for what is, uh, Slater Gym uh -huh. because we are a very attractive business because of the paperwork. Uh -huh. Yeah. Finally, uh, mm. discipline. How important is discipline when you're running a small to medium business? You know, one thing that I was telling one person is that you find a lot of growing big corporate companies, they look at your family structure before they employ you for a senior position. Uh -huh. like, mm, so you're married yeah. with a wife. Uh -huh. So you're a responsible oh. man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're disciplined. Yeah, yeah. So I can trust you with, with my money. Uh. And the reason why they do the credit check and everything, uh. because discipline is everything. Yes. So discipline also as an entrepreneur, it's, 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 it's the most important thing. Uh -huh. um, I remember saying to my team members now, when everything was going down, actually from COVID, uh -huh. I remember saying to them, if my money relationship and my relationship with money, if it was toxic, Oh. Ship Cafe would have died a long time ago. We wouldn't oh. have seen the second year. Oh. If I had a toxic relationship with money, oh. if I had a very, very, very fancy lifestyle, oh. if I had many, 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 many things to maintain on the side, oh. my Ship Cafe would have died. Yeah. Uh, Jay Kingdom, the big business, wouldn't been, even be a possibility. Oh. Discipline as an entrepreneur is one of the biggest thing. Oh. Biggest, biggest thing. Being able to say, even on your hard days, if you promise to pay a person, uh. three, five, six, seven days, 20 days later, honor that, uh. pay that person. It doesn't matter how late the payment is. Uh. I mean, I will tell you right now, there's no young entrepreneur or small business that says I haven't missed a payment. Yeah. That's, it's it's uh. normal to us. Yeah, uh. yeah it's normal to us. Uh. But when, the time, when you make that money, honor your weight. Pay the people that you promise to pay. Pay mm. your suppliers on time. Mm. Um, we even avoid to have credits mm. on, 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 on from suppliers. I mean, they, they always give us that offer. Oh, you know, you can open a credit. Mm. We decline that. Mm. We prefer to buy with cash every time, mm. even on the hardest days, mm. because credit is also one of the things that I know it can be detrimental to the business. Yeah. 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 Tums. I, 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 I certainly have learned a lot from you and I trust uh, everyone uh, watching or listening to this podcast will pick up a lot of nuggets, um, yeah. you know, how to nav navigate the business world, especially as a small to medium business. Mm. So thank you so much. We yeah. really appreciate your contribution and the lessons you've taught us. No, thank you very much, Prajwan. Yeah. It is really an honor. To, um, like I've, I've seen the podcast a lot. Mm. Uh, you're like, yo, I want to sit on that yellow couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, us, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. DJ's boo. Yeah. I want to sit on that yellow couch. It's yeah. it's truly an honor, and mm. I I pray that this podcast gets as many opportunities, yeah. and you invite many people like me to mm. sit on this corner. Thank you so much, Ndat. Kialebo. All the best, Lena. Thank All you, Professor. Sure. Thank you. Sure.